we are going to be talking about R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's right, respect, and how to keep it positive. I had so much that I wanted to talk to you guys about kids stuff. I'm kind of doing too many subjects in one video today. So for the first thing is respect. I wanted to talk about the importance of respecting the child. And this is at the core of the philosophy around positive discipline and also within a Montessori environment is the this idea of respecting the child. So Maria Montessori, she encouraged adults to think as children, just as many adults, as little people, um, people to be respected, which in the early 1900s was a totally revolutionary idea. But here, here where we are in the 21st century, this we live in a democratic society and children are respected in other realms when they go to extracurricular activities, when they go to school, when they go to a daycare or pre-care, uh, preschool, they're respected. And so it is really quite critical that we as their parents respect them. Love and Logic, which is a curriculum which I have bought and listened to the books. I just love Love and Logic, highly recommend it. Um, the guy behind Love and Logic, he says, think of the good neighbor principle. So if you had a good neighbor, how would you talk to your good neighbor? You wouldn't say, oh, Johnny, I can't believe you just messed your pants again. Just why don't you just go inside the house and change your outfit? Why do you keep doing this? Why can't you control yourself? Like you would never speak to a good neighbor that way. You would never probably speak to any adult that way. And you also want to think about when you think about respecting your child, put yourself in your shoes and try to empathize with them and think about how you would feel if you were talking to yourself the way that you talk to your child. So some examples of this, or maybe th imagine you called your husband up and said, you know, I am just having a really tough day today. I'm kind of tired and my boss she's been acting like a total not nice person and um like i just cannot figure out how i'm gonna get this project done i keep trying and trying and i can't seem to figure it out and i kind of messed up i was late for a meeting earlier this morning and it's just i just don't feel like i'm doing anything right and let's say your partner responded to that oh you know joy you just need to get over it like this is not a big deal you just need to, you, uh, you just kind of need to buck up, get over it, move on. Joy, can you imagine your partner going, Joy, are you crying? Are you cry Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're crying. This is not a big deal. You need to stop it. Stop crying right now. Take a deep breath. We've got to go. Okay, sorry, Joy, I got to go. How would you feel if that is how your partner talked to you? But I know I talk to my children like that sometimes, and it's not very respectful what imagine this what if what if i said to to my husband to hunter i said you know hunter i just don't want to do the dishes why do i have to do the dishes and he said look joy i don't really care if you want to do the dishes or not you're going to do the dishes because i said so okay well let me just let you know that would not go over really well in my household and i don't know in any other household in America in the 21st century, that wouldn't go over really well. I would feel so disrespected if my husband spoke to me that way. And your child does too. So what's one way if you if you do speak to your child disrespectfully, because come on, who, who doesn't? One way to help this is to just apologize. So when we talked about crucial conversations, we talked about one of the ways to restore safety in a conversation is to apologize when necessary, because this conveys honor and respect. So if you do catch yourself speaking disrespectfully to your child, just apologize to them. I mean, that speaks volumes on multiple different levels. It shows that you do respect them. It shows it models to them how they can apologize when they mess up and then they can move on and the relationship can actually move on. So. That's one thing talking about the positive. So the other mini lesson that I want to share with you today is that children cannot understand the negative. This is actually the same for adults, but it's just like many things in psychology, it's just magnified a lot for a child. 
So some, what I mean by that is they can't understand directives that are put in the negative. You need to tell them what to do. So you want to tell them what to do, not what not to do. Some examples of this would be don't run, uh, don't run versus please use your walking speed. Don't yell versus please use a quiet voice. And notice I said, please use a quiet voice. I told them clearly what I want them to do. I didn't say, please use an inside voice. What in the world does an inside voice mean? Please, don't yell versus please use a quiet voice. Don't throw versus we throw balls. We don't throw baby dolls. Um, whoops, that was supposed to be, we throw balls. We don't throw baby dolls. Okay, another, um, so another parenting course that I've gone through is called growing kids God's way. And they talk about this, this subject by saying you want to emphasize the virtue and not the vice. So that's a kind of fancy word talking about growing a child's character, but you want to emphasize the virtue, not the vice. So some examples of that was, oh my goodness, Johnny, that was so mean versus, oh my goodness, Johnny, that was really not kind. Um, another thing, an, an, another example of this would be, um, please don't hit your brother. That is not that, please don't hit your brother. That's so mean versus please use gentle touches and be kind to your brother. Okay. So your homework is going to be twofold for today. The first thing is when you catch yourself speaking disrespectfully or yelling disrespectfully because guilty is charged. Um, just apologize to your child and say, I, this is something mommy is working on. I'm growing and trying to respect you more and please forgive me. I apologize and be specific. You should always say, I apologize what you're, I apologize for speaking disrespectfully and raising my voice at you. Mommy's working and speaking to you more respectfully. Will you please forgive me? Um, and then the, the, your other homework is going to be to see if you can go the next 24 hours using only positive directives towards your children, meaning telling them what to do as opposed what not to do. All right, so can't wait to see you guys tomorrow.